Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this game called Last Epoch that has just went into beta. Uh, beta started yesterday. It's closed beta. As you can see here, it's 0.7 test. I have covered this game in alpha maybe six months back or so. Um, but anyway, let me talk a little bit about Last Epoch before I show you guys some gameplay. So Last Epoch is kind of like a PoE inspired game. Um, it also kind of, it's, I would say it has like PoE aspects, but has the combat style of maybe like Diablo 3 slash Victor Vran slash Van Helsing. Uh, it also has a complex crafting system, which I would say is more so um, very similar to the way Path of Exile works. So for an example, you find an augment on the floor, right? So this is added poison protection. So this would be like rolling kind of like poison resist, but in this game it's called protection. So I right click this, this gets stored into my uh, like crafting components list, which is like an inventory, but it's separate from your inventory. From there, you can see prefixes and you can see suffixes. So if you want to craft yourself a piece of gear, like for example, this weapon that I have was crafted, you can see that it's got its prefixes, it's got its suffixes. You can see that it doesn't have anything available. However, you can upgrade the affixes by using multiple types. Uh, I don't know if that bumps the tier up and then there's this little list over here which basically you can get these which allows you to break down items to acquire their affixes so instead of like just randomly selling things to the store you can be like oh I see this imp like uh, warrior's great sword of conflagration warrior would be a stat which is probably the physical and conflagration is probably like the ignite um, so it's kind of got a, a real nice crafting thing to it. I, I like that a lot personally. Um, definitely a nice clean interface. Uh, one of the things about the game is um, the way this skill tree system works is pretty unique. Instead of your character having its own skill tree, uh, every single one of your skills, not right now in beta because they're still you know adding stuff to the game, but every single skill will have a skill tree. So let's, let's use my charge skill as an example, which is my R lunge. So you can see Lunge here has its own tree. Usually the endpoints or the ones that are zero of one are the ones that make like a really big difference to it. And the things like zero eight are just minimal, but they add like, you know, they're basically like the prerequisites. So for example, for my charge, I have it so it uh, has increased recovery speed. I have it so it gives me strength. So that's basically like a damage buff. I also have it so I can, it's forced to use a spear, but I get base crit and now I'm scaling crit multi for it. So. You have, you're gonna have basically five skills that you're gonna use, and each one is gonna be supported how you like. Uh, I think you can max a skill out to level 20. Uh, and then one other thing to show you guys is you actually have your class. So for example, I'm a Sentinel. Um, so you pick a base class, and then you have three other classes that come after. You can choose to dabble between all of them. You can choose to only dabble in one of them. You can kind of do it however you'd like. So these passives are more straightforward. It's just literally passives um, some of them are like you know a little bit stronger like for example like forge guard has this one that every three seconds I get like a steroid which then scales with everything which is pretty cool um, you do also unlock more skills uh, from the classes as you allocate points in so if you look at Sentinel this was after 5 this was after 10 this was after 15 for forge guard 5 10 15 uh, 30 and I think that kind of limits you in not being able to like max everything sort of so with that being said, the game's in a really early state. I do personally have performance issues when playing the game, but it's not really like performance on my side. It's more so a performance that's being displayed through my recording uh, software. This has always been something that's kind of weird for me. So if you do have a little bit of lag, remember it's in beta, they're, they're working on some stuff. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get to it. I'm gonna show you guys some combat. Oh. Okay, uh, not sure what just happened there. My game is okay.
I want to say, I think just because I started up the game and I hit like a first pack, it was just kind of loading everything, but I could be wrong on that. The potion system is kind of like a mixture of PoE and I guess more so like D2. Uh, your belt, which would be here, uh, tells you how many potion slots it can hold, which would be here. The bosses are quite fun in this game too, they all kind of have their own like set skills as of now. It's not just like stand still and right click. Melee health leech? I keep forgetting about my W, so uh, like auto attack reset. I guess I don't really need it anymore now that I have my uh, my skill on E. This is the one I was basically building towards was Molten Blade. Unfortunately, Molten Blade doesn't have a skill tree yet, so there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about my character a little bit and show you guys the design process for it because even the game, though the game is in beta, you can still kind of have fun and theory craft your character and do a little progress. Uh, one thing I do want to state is... For those of you guys who are interested, um, there is the website link here. I'm just gonna explain their website because it's done really, really nicely. So to go over the classes, super simple. Uh, right now, the way we have it, these are your base classes. So I'm playing a Sentinel, which is a, uh, which I'm also playing the Mastery Forge Guard. So what is currently disabled from the game and I believe is going to be added later on in the beta would be Rogue and all of its subclasses. Rune Master and I think Warlock. Everything else currently is playable. Not everything has a skill tree yet. Um, I mean, obviously you can play every single character, just not every skill has a skill tree yet. Also, one thing that's interesting is the item system. I went and read a little bit about this. So one thing to note is trading is not really currently in the game right now, I don't think. Maybe you can gift, I'm not 100% sure, but um, the auction house is not currently in the game. They will be doing a five listed bazaar, which is like an auction house that you can only bid on. There is no buyout. And they specifically stated that <clears throat> it will never overshadow the rewards of engaging with the world yourself in the world of Atera. Particularly powerful uniques known as legendaries, gear crafted using rare and potent materials, and more loot will not be able to be traded. We want playing the game to be the core focus, not maximizing your trade skills. Fear not, friends, we will be able to freely gift items between each other as long as they've been friends for a reasonable amount of time, and both own the full game. So that was something that was kind of interesting. So now to talk about my character and what I am doing. So. Uh, I wanted to play something melee because I've been playing a lot of summoners so I didn't really want to play a summoner again this go around. Um, and I wanted to play a two-handed character. So I decided on Forge Guard. I was thinking of trying out like the mage, I think it was called Spellblade. But anyway, I decided on this guy. So I started off with going 
um, basically unbreakable, which is essentially just HP and vitality. Uh, since we're playing a melee character, it's important to be able to absorb a bit of damage, otherwise, you know, a dead DPS deals no DPS. Um, so I decided to opt out with the health there, and I'm pretty happy, right? Like, in comparison, I'm level 29. Uh, this is giving me 80 health and 8 vitality. I only have 330 HP, so that's like, that's pretty good in my opinion. Uh, Juggernaut just gives us armor and increased strength. Strength is a damage increase to pretty much all of our skills since almost all of them scale off of strength. Uh, I also went into Relentless for increased damage. Um, I was going to go get like the other passives, but I don't really see anything too crazy to be honest. I mean, Overwhelm seems okay, but I'd rather get the points in Forge Guard. Uh, axe Thrower seems unique because it says when you hit an enemy, you have an 8% chance per point to throw an axe towards the nearest enemy. You can only throw one axe a second. But if I look at Forge Guard, Forge Guard says you get... Where is it? Um, there is a note here that says melee damage per point if you have used a throwing attack in the past 4 seconds. So I wonder if you can use the throwing axe to proc Pillum Mastery, because that would be, that would be pretty strong in my opinion. It'd be some nice synergy. Um, anyway, in Forge Guard, we have went into five, well, five Prime Fighter because it gives attunement, and Molten Blade is uh, basically hybrid because it's an element, so it scales with strength and it scales with my attunement. The fire scales with attunement, the fizz scales with strength, to be more specific. Um, and then I went with Fresh from the Forge, which gives us a pretty big uh, steroid of physical and fire. It's actually like quite immense with how much damage it does, especially when you take into account critical strike multiplier scaling. So uh, with our charge right now, I wasn't sure. I kind of wanted to just make it more defensive, but I just want to try offensive and see like how, how ballsy we can be with the character. So um, I ended up crafting my weapon. It's not that difficult to craft a weapon, so normally I would not go with a restricted weapon type, especially in a game like this because it's so early and you don't really know anything. But since you can craft your gear, I told myself I can always just craft, you know, get the new base type and then just craft it up and everything will be good. Um, so we ended up going with a spear literally just because of this. Also, spears have uh, melee critical strike chance base on them, but they have slower attack speed than swords, I think. Um... Yep. Then on top of that, we've got Repose, or Vengeance, which Vengeance is a core part of our build. So Vengeance, basically, we make it so we can hold more Repose stacks. So I basically hit a target with my Vengeance. If Vengeance is successful, um, then you will Repose, taking 30% less damage and striking a nearby enemy. However, while I have a Repose on, which I can have three because of Zealot's technique, I gain 100% global increased damage, which is global, not physical, which means it should work for the attunement part, which is the fire and the physical part. Um, so Dark Duelist is really good. And then I was going with like Executioner, although I maybe should have went with like Bolster for just straight damage reduction, but who cares, right? Just trying to have some fun here. Then I do have Cyclone that I'm not using because I wanted to build around like the Forge Master skills, which unfortunately don't have a skill tree right now, so we'll just hold this for later. Um, in terms of other skills I'm using that don't have a skill tree, I use Ephemeral Stance, which basically gives us 70% increased physical and void, but we lose 7% of our current health whenever we use a skill. That doesn't really matter though, because we have like really, really good leech that you saw from the weapon. So as we're fighting, we're gonna have like 30 plus life regen a second at all time. Um, this stance will most likely be swapped out with the forge guard stance that's over here, um, which is a melee attack that hits all enemies. Oh, sorry, forge strike. I thought this was a stance. Never mind, JK. So maybe we'll go Juggernaut Stance after, which is a more tanky stance, but it reduces our crit and our movement speed and our damage, so probably not. Um, and then last up, we have the Manifest Weapon, which Manifest Weapon is basically like a repost, except you can manually click it. And it's cool because it you can do it in between an attack. So for example, say I go to poke, I can hit it. And that ax that you just saw that landed was that skill, right? So I can try it again, right? There's no animation. It's basically if you play PoE, it's an instant cast skill, which is cool because you can be like, like that, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, I really like how clean 
the game feels right now. It may feel very laggy, um, but it feels very clean, you know? All they gotta do is fix it, which that's like what the whole point of beta is for. And I think they'll have a very successful game, at least for like, you know, the single player side or, you know, small multiplayer. It's really way too early to speak about the future of the game. I know a lot of people just want to quit one thing and move in and just all in on one thing. And it's like, just chill, man. Chill, watch the game grow, just like we did with Path of Exile, just like we did with Grim Dawn, just like we did with Wolsin. Oh, wait, that game's still being developed, sorry. Uh, anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. So I just wanted to give you guys a rundown on what I'm doing and what I'm playing. Uh, I'll probably be playing Last Epoch for maybe like one to three days, not really sure. Um, hopefully I can get the game a bit more optimized because that'll add some more life to the game for me personally. But anyway, I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you are curious, just go check the game out at lastepoch.com. You can go check it there. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the live stream. So take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.